welcome back to the Balanced Diet of Teletainment. Time for us to talk about something very important as we they, they related to our justice system for inside Wibodo, Nigeria. Now, we understand say plea bargain an indicator of the development of a country's criminal judicial system. Now, a country where not actually get plea bargain, now, a country where it lack a developed justice system. Now, now they're very, very essential because when you file about three or five charges against a person, and one, they're extremely serious, while the other, not too day serious, you may find out, say, in the process of investigation, say, you not get conclusive evidence for the most serious charge, but you don't sufficiently um, convince evidence, you don't sufficiently get convincing evidence for the less serious charge. And that now they also bring in this plea bargain. But we're going to understand more concerning the plea bargain and even our justice system. Because yesterday, myself and Ben had been discuss about the death by hanging for anybody where they involved in hate speeches. So we'll talk about them um, today uh, as it relates to our justice system. But no better person to talk about them um, than um, Barrister Harry Wabrizi. Don't join us in the house again. Good to have you again, Barrister. Thank you very much. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. All right. So now maybe we start with this um with the with the penalty when they talk on top of this hate speech. Now because we they hear even the papers they put on for inside the papers this morning they for the headline on top death penalty which is a capital punishment punishment on top hate speech what is your opinion on top of that one well um that's by the way um when we're, when, we're, when we're talking about capital punishment for hate speech well i'm not surprised because um um we're trying to like i said earlier on or all of the times i come into the studio um these are concepts that have been in applications or that have been in foreign jurisdictions before now, okay? It's just that um, we usually have the system changed in Nigeria. So I'm not surprised. But however, I, I still feel, I maintain that the um, punishment is quite severe. And well, if it will pass second reading, we don't know. So let's... Let me explain more about this, this particular bill wasted today for inside the house. Now the talks say, if your speech make another person die or a group of people die, then you are liable to die by hanging. So in that case, is this justified? Especially when Nigerians don't even understand what speech can make another person die. Well, well, justification, justification, the general um, populace should um, decide whether that is um, justifiable, okay? Uh, um, but in my opinion, in my opinion, it should, it's not justifiable because that will be too severe. That will be too severe. But like I said, let's um, watch and see. Uh, there are so many um, protests going on at the moment against that particular bill. So let's watch and see and see what the government of the day mix of that law. But is it duplication of laws? Because I understand, say, in the law, uh, we, we not get provisions for speeches where if he actually cause damage to another person. Is it like we're duplicating laws in Nigeria? Well, no, it all, it all the laws are, are almost being duplicated, okay? And this particular law is um, a duplication of a particular act that have been in existence, okay? That have been in existence, and so, um, I, I only think that they are seeking to modify that law, but that's not being specific by the legislators. Now, if you look, um, if you look, it for a lot of people, are, a lot of Nigerians are tired of having laws because we have so many laws we know they implemented, and it can't be like say that they bring new one. You go here today, say they don't sign this bill, they don't sign that bill. It's beyond bringing out the bill. It's beyond sitting down there. So, at what point you feel say you need to do something, or maybe we need to wait till we feel do self? To remind our governors or the president or the people within power, say, I beg, this law we don't ground, we need to enforce them, we need to implement them, rather than you coming out to create new ones that could, like she said, could, um, we give me that word again, yes, duplicate, Okwano, that would duplicate the one we already don't ground. Now, my, the, the implementa implementation process of laws is, um, is a two way thing. You don't just make law and expect somebody to abide by it. So somebody should be able to participate in a lawmaking process for him to participate. Um, that's my liberal view about uh, making laws, okay? But in Nigeria, you find out that the legislators just wake up, just wake up and, you know, make a law and then impose it on us. And, as a, and you find out that some people want to flaunt those um, um, positions or those laws that, in, um, that have been made. 
So my opinion is that the process of lawmaking should be complete. Let our legislators know that they cannot disinvolve the populace, the citizens, in the process of lawmaking. It's not done anywhere in the world. In, in the United States, in the United Kingdom, before a law is being passed, there's what we call the prayer um, awareness programs. There's, uh, you know, a lot of things go on in, on, 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 on the surface before they eventually consider um, passing that particular law. So let's talk about the plea bargain now. Help us understand how important is a plea bargain as regards to um, securing justice. Yes, the concept of plea bargaining is um, almost a very new one in Nigeria. Just um, about just in 2015, the ACJL um, captured that concept. Okay, it's simply in a nutshell that uh, that um, concept is simply saying take a lesser offence in place of a higher offence, and then you forfeit some other things for your higher offence. That good. Well. Like I'll keep, like I'll say, I'm a very liberal um, person, and I believe in um, um, following precedents, and I believe in following the step of great people. So Nigeria following the steps of great nations, like in the United States, this concept has been in existence since 1815. Plea bargaining. As a matter of fact, people, do, you don't end up hearing that a so so and so person um, uh, defrauded the government of the United States. You don't because the plea bargaining is working. Because you take the lesser one. I mean, of, you of course, and then you're cleared. Okay, you're cleared of the, you're cleared of the, the serious charges. charges. Of the serious charge, exactly. Let's say now, if we bring that into Nigeria, that means we'll have a lot of. It is working already in Nigeria. Dim, um, Dimipriye Alamiesia, the same thing happened to him. The former MD of Union Bank, um, Emmanuel Dume, the same thing happened to him. Um, former IGP of police, Tafawa um, Balogun, the same thing happened. Recently, um, um, Desiani too, as well. The same thing is happening. They are simply saying, okay, it, as a matter of fact, economically, it is better for the government. I'll give you an instance. Take, for example, what happened to Dimi, um, the late um, former governor of Bayasa State, Dimi Priye. He died. Do you know if there was a criminal trial against him, that, that trial would have survived him and he would have died, whereas government has taken a whole lump sum for, you know, as plea bargaining in the whole um, allegation against him. So, so it, it hasty, they make the process, investigation uh, process exactly. faster, uh, it and makes, will judge the, the, the uh, case uh, and move on to the exactly. next one. But now make we even look at um, the issue of um, um, voting for inside the country, because we know the election are next year, and a lot of people are advocating. If you go to religious organization, they're coming telling you, come out and vote, come out and vote. But getting the voters card for a lot of people is still an issue. Now suppose they come outside, they put a remedy called compulsory voting. Because for some countries, they've made it compulsory to vote. Now, if you look Belgium, Belgium, the talk say you go face fine or, if possible, go to jail. And even you go lose the ability to vote if you don't vote in the last four elections we didn't get for inside the country. If you look at Australia, Australia talks say it is even compulsory for you to go the voting, like your local government, make sure you are there, presently there, and tick your name. But it's not compulsory for you to vote for inside but when that time comes. If you look Greece, look Singapore, look Venezuela, look at the countries that have made voting compulsory for inside their own parts and they don't they work for them. You feel, say, we are actually serious in terms of making sure, say, the, the legal people or people within the legal age are going to vote come 2019. Are we, are we right to force them to vote? Are we, forcing, are we facing it squarely, holistically, and getting a good solution about it? The concept of um, voting is... is um is the, the concept of franchise is, is a right to every individual, is inherent, okay, which has been captured under the civil and political rights of um, every citizen. So whether you use the word compulsory, whether you use the word mandatory, mandatory. it is more than compulsory and mandatory, even if it is not captured in our um, judicial system. So um, mm -hmm. my point, um, um, general, my point sum, summary is that, um, yes, it is mandatory, it is compulsory, because every citizen has a right to bring in someone right. or the right to get someone out of the seat. So whether it is captured in our law or not, my view is that the word, you, the word shall means it should be compulsory.
We're going to talk more concerning um, that and also concerning the plea bargain and the justice system for inside Webodo, Nigeria. We'll talk more about them. And some cases where it's today are wait trial. It's, it's really sad, but we'll talk about them. We still get Harry Wabweze inside the house. But make we enter our newsroom and when we come back, the Good Morning Ninja show still the continuity. All right, so good to see Baba K again after a very long time. We don't leave us, but he's back now. All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja show. We still get Barrister Harry Wabweze inside the house. I'm going to talk about plenty of things as regards to voters' registration and making it compulsory for people to vote. We don't talk about a plea bargain. We don't talk about death by hanging for anyone who involved themselves in hate speeches. All right, um, Barrister. Now, I'll be the ask you a question before we bar break because I know say for you can cor correct me if I'm wrong, please. Because for inside the country, it could be Lagos in Nigeria, the law day on ground where they allow children as young as 15 or from 15 years of age to secure a job, to get married, and to even pay tax at the age of 15. But if you look when it comes to voting, you cannot vote till you are 18 years of age. So if the government can collect money from you at the age of 15, why can't they give that same 15 year old the civic rights where you and I get to vote come 2019? Well, um, I, I, I want to believe that, um, I haven't seen that law, okay, but, um, but I know if such law is in, is in existence, um, there will be a clash of law. There's the federal law and the state law. And that wouldn't um, all go well. So, but however, let me, ask, let me just um, speak um, in anticipation that such law exists. So if, you, if such law exists, I'll tell you why they wouldn't allow underage to vote or they wouldn't give rights to children that are 15 years of age to vote. Um, the reason is simple. When you're underage, you can be easily influenced, okay? You can be easily influenced. So, and of course, the government in Nigeria, you would agree with me that what we do here is to influence voters. So children, I believe that the law will, the, the, the law is against such, and then such, so, so that the law does not want such children to um, uh, be influenced easily. Okay, they could, people could easily give them money, who could easily give them um, funds or assets and all that, and you see them gathering in mass and, of course, coming out to vote and all that. So I, I believe that this um, um, uh, position would have been put in place, okay, so that um, the parliament, the parliament's legislators would be very mindful of that factor. Maybe basically under the employment law or something. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Under employment law, the, yeah, the, the minimum, minimum age for is... employment in industrial undertaking is 15 years of age. Okay. Now, under what? Is it the constitution or maybe employment body getting under, under the labor? This under the that's labor. labor then, okay. Well, well, if, but if, if they can allow that for yeah. a 15 year old, then they should then there should be something that should be done to allow people of that age because now when they hear alleged story, alleged that has not been confirmed of how do they use children to register for voters in the Northern part of Nigeria. So I'm putting the talk I'm saying if they, they do an under G under G and if we get the law, we don't create small, small window for people as young as 15 year old, then why don't we just look at it, try and emphasize on it, enlarge them, make we legalize them so that people within that so age children range, be allowed to vote. I mean, if well, children are voting, I know it's sad. Well, it's I mean, sad that yeah. children are voting in the northern part, but children are allowed that to vote. That is a question. That I is, mean, that is a question we should be asking yeah. ourselves. Should children be allowed to vote? And well, uh, our, our democracy is still growing. What okay? makes us think eighteen-year-olds are not children? Because they are teenagers. Fifteen is a teenager. Eighteen, yeah. 18, 18, 18, 18 years, years in, you are a teenager already, so they university. feel that. Yeah. Eighteen years in university, he lives alone. He lives mm -hmm. outside his friends' influence. Can I bust your bubble? We have fifteen-year-olds in universities now. Well, well, when that's against the law. Things are changing. Things are changing. I was sixteen when I was entering. But things university. are changing. Against the law, yeah. you can't be fifteen and you're in the university. It's against mm. the law. There's a bylaw, university laws that stipulates that once you're 15, you can't go into school. Yeah. So that's under age. You shouldn't be in university. If you are, then it's a criteria to disqualify you. You might go on and, yeah. and, and on, but at the end of the day, they will disqualify you because so you, that's you, even debatable. Still, of course, because a lot of, of course, schools they carry underage so. children yeah, yeah, until they are university. Now let's talk about this plea bargain because with the fight, try see how corrupt cases can be brought to book. Now, which part plea bargain they play in making corrupt case corrupt officials um, pay? 
Well, I, I, we've, we've, um, that's what we've been saying all along. Um, I think plea bargaining has been very instrumental in trying to curb um, um, lauded monies, especially in corrupt cases. Okay, you would agree with me that even though the concept is very new in Nigeria, as at 2015, it was only practicable in Lagos State. That was under the ACGL, ACGLA. Okay, and um, um, over time, over time, the application of that this concept has actually helped treat corruption cases more than going to court, okay? Or more than staying longer in court. Okay? Well, how does it help treat corrupt cases? Is it by getting some of their assets and then letting the corrupt person himself go scot free? Yes, by relinquishing some of their assets, some of the monies taken. Usually the law would stipulate a maximum amount depending on the fine someone has to pay if eventually he or, is, uh, he or she is convicted. So. Um, there are laid down procedures, there are rules under 270, section 270 of the um, Administration of Criminal Justice Law Act, okay, so um, there are laid down procedures, okay, so f I'll give you an example, when somebody committed um, a higher offense, a bigger offense, and there are smaller offenses, okay, at the inception of him, himself, the prosecutor or the legal practitioner, they might decide to do a plea bargaining. Okay, and everybody will sit down, draw an agreement plan. It usually, it's usually in writing. It's, it's not different from what we we'll find in normal criminal cases okay. where somebody is charged to court. And then in the process, he wants to settle out of court. So the court will tell them to go and draw a settlement plan. So they put it in writing. And then he accepts the prosecutor, my, the prosecutor might um, bring up issues as to him agreeing for sentence for a lesser offense, accepting, to, accepting that he committed a lesser offense, thereby um, uh, waiving the serious the offense, one. yes. What and then he forfeits mm -hmm. a larger portion of his assets, either funds or something, you know. Uh, just like in Desiani's case, where she, of course, some of his properties, she's already um, uh, beginning to um, relinquish some and all that. So. That's the, that's the um, you know, general provision. Okay, but um, in your own opinion, um, is it the right way to go? Well, yeah. it's in the law, but is it the right way to go? Your own opinion, right? Yeah, now? yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a human rights um, activist, and in the words of my, in the erudite scholar, Professor Akion Ebody, he would always, um, in this issue, he wrote a book, a particular article on this, and his opinion, of course, plea bargaining is just a concept that, um, that helps the influential people in the society. Of course, if you steal a good, nobody wants to take the good from you. They would um, rather go to court and you know, jail you for like two years or three years or four years. But when somebody steals one billion naira, the government wants him to um, relinquish that money because it will help the economy. So nobody's interested in, in, in jailing him except for political reasons and all that, just like in Dazuki's case and all that. So, uh, my opinion, plea bargaining is a very good concept that should be welcomed, more particularly because the advanced countries are, um, are have they've been applying it and it's, it's been helping their them. system. That is why we and I would say, oh, there's no corruption in America. I mean, I take an exception to it. In America, America has the highest rate of corruption of course. cases. Of course. So, like, like even United Kingdoms, but because they have a system of democracy that covers these things within a shell, you find out that um, um, it's not pronounced, unlike here. Very subtle. Yes. Very subtle. All right, thank you so much, Harry. Wanveze, you're a solicitor, and you're also, um, you're also a partner with some one or two legal um, organizations concerning the work we do. Thank you so much for coming inside the studio this morning. All right, now, so we see him this morning on top of the balance at Hotel Entertainment. So we'll go there again tomorrow to give you more and more. This knowledge you know about, make you get a better day. All right, and my name is Terry Man Uvi Ehigam. Sorry, sir, we'll not give you some business news this morning and even give you the exchange rate. But trust me, tomorrow we will give you what they happen for inside the world of um, business and also the exchange rate. See you again tomorrow in peace and not in pieces. Thank you so much, Harry Wabwezi. Nice conversation. Much. To enjoy more of this, our Ubonga videos when you just watch, press this button.